booktube it's andrea and i'm here today i'm in a different location um and i'm going to do my non-fiction november tbr now the reason i'm in a different location is we are currently decorating the room for the baby so where i keep all my books and where i normally film is filled with the stuff that usually lives in that room some of it needs to go up into the attic like suitcases um and other things just need to be sorted out thrown away or uh, put somewhere else so I'm going to be filming all over the place hopefully by the weekend I'll be back in that room when I come to do my October wrap-up and book haul also the light in here is not that good because I don't have my um, my studio light again that's in the other room but I thought I need to get my TBR up because I haven't done it yet because obviously I've not been very well so I've not been filming as much as I like to um, but yeah so non-fiction November is run by Olive over at Book Olive and also by Nonfic Books. Um, it runs every November for the whole month, and the premise is that you read more non-fiction than you would normally. So if you don't read anything, if you can read one book, that's fantastic. If you read a lot, read more. I normally average one one or two non-fiction books a month. It really depends on what I'm in the mood for reading. And um, they do have challenges. Uh, there's home, love something scholarship and there's another one and I cannot remember which one it is but I'm not really going to be worrying about those challenges although all these books will fill into fall into those one way or another um but I've got four books that I want to read here plus a few extra non-fiction books that I will use if I get through the ones that I'm going to try and do so let's get started with the actual TBR the first book I'm going to read is the one I pulled out of my TBR jar last month and I haven't started yet, which is Can't Buy Me Love, The Beatles, Britain in America by Jonathan Gould. As you see, this is quite a chunky book. It comes in at, if we get past the notes and the index at just over 600 pages 606 pages to be precise so this is actually one of my partner's books as you can see he got it for three pounds somewhere cheap um i don't know where that was octagon books i don't know where that is could be anywhere um so i pulled this out so i will be reading this this in in november as part of non-thick november the second book is a book I picked up in London while I was there earlier this year in April and it's Necropolis London and It's Dead by Catherine Arnold and this tells the story of London's well burials from prehistoric and medieval times to the present day um, how lots of London has lots of graveyards and forgotten cemeteries and catacombs how when the church cemeteries are f filled up in Victorian times how they moved the cemeteries out of London into places where we've got places like Highgate and so on uh, so yeah I mean I've I heard about this a while back I think I saw it on booktube and I wanted to read it it's not a very big book and it'll fit in my handbag so I can dig it to work so perfect as you all know fitting in with the category of love this one what I love is Hollywood history so I'm going to be reading uh, Clara Bow Running Wild by David Sten so this tells the story of Hollywood's first it girl Clara Bow and her life and career now David Sten w wrote the absolutely fantastic and highly critically acclaimed biography on Jean Harlow Bombshell which I absolutely love um, this book was first I can't wait to read this one um, I have heard from um, author Michelle Morgan that this is a very very good book so yes and finally sticking with um, one of my favorite another thing I love or interested in is history and again sticking with the local areas of London I'm going to read Jack the Ripper and the East End introduced by Peter Ackroyd and this was in association with the Museum of Docklands and the Museum of London and it is literally about um, Jack the Ripper's East End and Whitechapel lots of photographs in it and illustrations so that those are the four books I'm going to try and read this month so that's four books that works out as one a week now for me one a week is not very much but it is non-fiction it does take a bit of longer normal bit longer than normal but another book I want to try and get into a bit further 
uh, this month is a book I started a while back. It's again a big chunk of book of oh, 750 pages and that's Agatha Christie's Complete Secret Notebooks. So I've had this for a while as you can see I have started it but it is obviously very in-depth and it's something I just like to dip into every now and again. I usually read about one of the books and then put it down for a bit. So I do want to read a bit more about that. That's by John Curran. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I think it's fascinating how writers write and authors, uh, basically she just kept lots of notebooks and she'd have bits of stories in one book along with a shopping list or something similar. And I just thought it was fascinating the way she worked. So I'm really gonna try and get into that this month as well. I have two other uh, non-fiction books to add if I manage to get through those four and do a bit of Agatha Christie. I'm not expecting to finish the Agatha Christie one in November, although I do want to make a bit of a dent in it, just simply because of the size. And that is um, the memoirs Call the Midwife by Jennifer Worth. Um, I don't know if you've seen the television series Call the Midwife, but it's actually based on a true story, the memoirs of a midwife in Jennifer's, by Jennifer Worth. Um, so it is a true story, so I mean, I love the series. I never watched the early ones, but obviously it's in the East End, it's popular. And obviously with the Jack the Ripper stuff, I'm fascinated about East End history. So I think this would be an interesting way. And it's also set in the 1950s. You can't go wrong with that, can you? Let's be honest. And the final non-fiction book I have on the list, although I do have a nice stack of non-fiction books over there. As you can see, they're, they're the ones right on the end, including a couple of biographies on Mae West, some Egypt books, some other Hollywood books, and so on, that I could dip into should I need to, but the other one I'm gonna try and get through this month is The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher, who uh, sadly died last year. Um, so I picked this up and I wanted to sort of read it and I never sort of got around to it and it's a sort of memoir. So I thought I'll stick this in. If I get through all these, I will have a go on that. That's my non-fiction November TBR. I do have one fiction book that I have to read in November and that is Stephen King's Firestarter because that's part of the Stephen King Yearathon. I have managed to keep up to date with that. I'm very pleased with myself. So I'm gonna have a nice relaxing non-fiction November. Some of these books, like these paperback ones, perfect for taking to work or to um, the doctors when I've got uh, my hospital appointments uh, with the midwife, <laughs> call the midwife and I'll be going to see the midwife. Um, so I, there's a lot of waiting around so I can always pick one of those up and read it. I also have a week off annual leave in November so I can chill out and read as much non-fiction as possible then as well. So those are the books I'm going to be picking up for non-fiction November. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will keep you posted. I will probably do a weekly wrap up on non-fiction starting, um, obviously not this Friday, which is the 3rd of November, but on the 10th of November onwards, I will do a weekly wrap up and tell you how I'm getting on with each book. Um, have I finished any? How far have I got through? And, and so on. So I'm looking forward and I've been uh, to non-fiction November. I have been watching all of uh, the TBRs that I can find to see what you're all reading. I hope you're going to in enjoy it and join in. If you've read any of these books, obviously leave me a comment below to say, tell me what you think of them. And I will see you at the end of Nonfiction November or in the week. Um, so I'll be back soon with my October wrap up and my October book haul and I will see you all soon. Bye.